Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Victory today is mine. What'd you tell Satan? I told Satan. To do what? Get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Oh, yeah. Stamp, son. I didn't grow up in church. Don't judge me. It's obvious. Um. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you saying? I just realized I got the hat on that ain't, uh, that ain't for sale because we can't seem to keep an online store working. <laughs> 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 Cray for us. <laughs> Just having a hard time. But the people want it. That's the, you know, yeah, y'all yeah. been so loyal. Be y'all on, y'all always want our stuff. It'll be available one day. It'll be, it'll be on sale soon. <laughs> Stop judging us. Speak those things that are not as if they were. Right. Even though that's a misinterpretation of that passage because it was talking about how Abraham believed the God who could speak those things Girl, you that was are always... not as if they were. And it was accounted to him as righteousness. Okay. Ooh. Which is crazy because we use that verse and attribute it to ourselves. Clearly, you didn't read the chapter. But you know, prosperity teachers that made us read the Bible in a way that like makes us love ourselves instead of love God more. Wow. So. Okay. That was anyway. a lot to chew on. <laughs> Okay, so about upon waking, it, just, it bubbled up. <laughs> it, it just bubbled up. All righty, that's my wife, y'all. Yeah, uh, you wrote a you wrote another book called I did. Upon Waking with a little you bird on it. You said it right. That's I so said good. It, I said it wrong because you time. started a whole race of people who say upon waking. Wakening. Yeah, I did. I'm sorry. That's how influential you are. We we were just in Germany and the person got on the stage and said, Upon. She said, she wrote a book called Upon Awakening. And then she said, Oh, I just, I did the same thing Preston did. Yeah. (laughs) Definitely did. But yes, I did. Yeah, man. So why, why did you, why did you write this book? The publisher asked me to. Oh, wow. I love the honesty. So we had a meeting and they were like, Hey, what do you think about writing devotional? I was like, ah. I don't like devotionals. I don't want to write something that I don't even like. You know Mm. what I'm saying? Because it's not that I'm anti-devotional, it's that I'm anti-shallow devotionals. I'm anti-self-centered devotionals. I'm anti-non-scriptural devotionals. Mm -hmm. And so I think that I already had like kind of like a pushback against it because that's that's my framework for a lot of the contemporary devotionals. But then I thought about it and was like, why don't you create what you think is lacking? Yeah. Like, why don't you write the the kind of devotional that you want to read? And so I did. That's good. And it was very hard to do. It was not easy. Well, what was hard about it? And, and I would I would like to know because I never asked you this question. What was hard about it, and uh, how was it different than writing your other books? Yeah. So other books, Gay Girl, Good God, is my story, right? So that that the only difficulty with that is arranging the story in such a way that is honest, theological, and winsome or persuasive, right? Yeah. Holier Than Thou was difficult because I'm broaching a topic that is actually very complex, which is the holiness of the living and yet invisible God. Yeah. That's hard. Devotional, I had this like assumption, oh, 60 days, $500, 500 word count, 500 to 800 word count. Like, oh, I could do that. But you got to understand that's 500 to 800 word count for 60 days of different topics. Wow. Right? So originally it was supposed to be 90 days. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. It was you supposed to be a 90 day devotional. was like, I can't do that. I said, I literally can't do it. Yeah. We're going to have to move it to two months. Because the, the, everything is is too much. I'm not Tony Evans. I'm not. I'm not Priscilla Shire. Yeah, I'm you, not Crystal Evans Hurst. I'm not. I'm not none of the Evans. I don't have the <laughs> degree of wisdom required. Yeah. to write for ninety days of different ideas. Yeah, that's good. I mean, yeah, I, I feel like you wrote where you were at. You know, yes. everybody that you you named, they they're older. You know, yeah. and so Tony Evans has a, a fountain of wisdom. You the, know, so, you know the strategy. So was, upon waking, um, part two when you're fifty. Yeah. You know, the strategy is, or uh, <laughs> upon going to bed or something like that. But the strategy was we went through, before I, I shut my, down my Twitter because they're crazy. And <laughs> I opened my Twitter back up for a week for my publisher to download all of my tweets. Yeah. And so they downloaded all of my tweets over the last five or six years and we put each tweet in a particular category. So there was theology, there was stewardship, there was ministry, there was parenting. And so a lot of Upon Waking is me taking particular tweets and fleshing them out. 
Wow. Which wow. was kind of cool because it, it is like how God is able to, um, it's not even necessarily that I needed new content. I did need a lot of new content, but it's also that God just gave me the grace to repurpose content yeah. that I had already put out. Because if world. you think about all the tweets that you tweeted in, in the past, it they were they, they were, it was a lot, but it was a lot of things that, you know, you thought about when you first woke up. Mm -hmm. A lot of the things that you, the Lord kind of shared with you that day. Mm -hmm. And so it's so many things that the Lord didn't, you know, didn't share with us that we didn't forget about. Mm -hmm. So that's a, actually a really good idea for people to do. Mm -hmm. uh, well, one of the things that you talk about in this book, you talk about how the society that we live in and social media and, and all the things kind of fight for our attention. Yes, um, And it's just, we have so many distractions, but also this level of boredom mm -hmm. that we can experience in our quiet time or our intimacy with the Lord. And so, uh, one, me personally, I thought that was really good to talk about because you are a young woman who's very much enthralled in the social media life or whatever. And so enthralled? I feel like- because I, well, that's probably the wrong word. Involved. Involved. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because I, I feel like you're you're active on social media. Mm -hmm. uh, you're a Christian influencer, but you're also. Uh, am, are we influencers? I think we are. Are we? I think that. Do we really fit that category? The Gen Zs might call us that, right? Can I Google what an influencer is? We influence people to love Jesus, right? <sighs> I don't want to be one, but I feel like. You are. I feel like I am. Influencer, a person or thing that influences another. If that's the case, we're all influencers. Yeah, we are. Kim's an influencer. Kim's a Kim's a big influencer. Yes, yeah, she is. I literally texted Kim the other night and said, Kim, where did you get those shoes from on your stories? Influencing she, us. Because she influences me all the she time. She influences me with cardigans. Sometimes I see Kim's cardigans and I say, huh. The only thing I'm Kim influenced. The only thing Kim doesn't influence me while her cardigans is wearing them in June. Yeah, that's she I, she wears I them. That. She wears them at the height of the summer. Yeah. But you know what's crazy? I don't get it. I'm influenced by the fact she's never been musty. <laughs> <laughs> I can't recall one time. That is a testimony. That Kim has been musty. Kim, As, I've never, I've never smoked Kim musty. <laughs> That's influence right there. <laughs> that is steward in your, your leadership. Your, your armpits have never smelled like. <laughs> my God, praise God. Your you armpits can. have never smelled like. Ruff. You use natural deal. That's because you're Jamaican. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> she said she spent that. But anyways. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. You were saying that I'm, I'm on social media. Yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's not like, I guess my point is, it's not like you're some 55-year-old 55 per, 55 person who posts on social media like once every two months. <laughs> yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? And so yeah. for you as a young person to write about how things distract us mm -hmm. and you're so involved in social media, um, one, I feel like is you're, you're writing from a, a place of experience. Mm -hmm. And so what led you to, to write about those things? Well, I think the bigger picture is if we are people who have been redeemed, right? We've been saved. One of the things, one of the reasons we've been saved is that it says that we've been delivered out of darkness into his marvelous light to proclaim the excellencies of him, yeah. right? To even proclaim excellencies about God, his nature, his character, his kingdom, we got to know mm. what the excellencies are. Yeah. Meaning we, we have to know his nature. Then you have things like Matthew 28. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you. What has he commanded? You got to know, right? And yeah. so some of... The temptation, I think, is that there are so many things taking our attention where we're not learning mm. about God. We're not learning about his nature. We're not learning about truth because this TikTok is more interesting or this concert is more fun or this movie is more enthralling. And I think all of those are good. Music is good. Entertainment is good. Art is good. But if they if they are treated with this kind of, uh, how do you say it? If they take up more of our attention and our time, yeah, our lives are going to struggle. Because it's, it's it's crazy to me. That's so good. It's crazy. I complicated that, but at no, the end of the day. It wasn't complicated. It was actually really good. Our lives are going to struggle if we don't have adequate time in God's work. Because it's, <laughs> it, it, it's crazy to me how 
one thing can can be such a blessing, but also can be not a blessing if you don't allow the Lord to also govern that thing, which is social media, because social media, it has this ability to put things in front of you so fast, Mm -hmm. so frequent, Mm -hmm. you know, so constant that if you don't be careful, it's not that it is merely taking away your attention, but it can take away your affection. You know what what has often showed me how distracted I am? What? Because I think we know we're distracted, but there's times where something happens where I realize the degree of the distraction when I fasted from social media. Mm. Times when I fasted, the, the, it's like an impulse to pick up my phone. Yeah. Or an impulse to click on an app. It, it's like my, I didn't even think about it. It's like my hand just was used to it. And I'm like, do I do this all day? Yeah. Where I just impulsively pick up my, it's just a thing. And I, re, I think about times when I was young, I used to read books all the time as a kid. And I would just sit in my bed and read for hours Even now, as much as I like information, as much as I like books, if I get through a paragraph, I'm tempted to pick up my phone. I'm tempted to look at the news. I'm tempted to answer this email. Or what? Like my mind just goes to all these different places. It's like I've lost my ability to just sit and be still. And I just wonder how that's affecting our intimacy because much of what God has called us to do requires stillness. In light of you writing this book and naming it Upon Waking, which is a very beautiful title, Thank by the you. way. Um, that's the poet in you. I, I wanted to call it a... I don't remember the other title. The other option was like, Hello, Hello, or Good Morning or something. I think it was Good Morning. Oh, I like Good Morning, too. Yeah, that's a good title. Um, in light of you uh, n- naming it Upon Waking... Um, how important is it for a Christian to just dedicate their first to the Lord? Hmm. You tell uh, me. Well, you wrote the book. Yeah, but you're a Christian. <laughs> I think it's really important, you know. Um, I think, you know, and I would love for you to answer it after me because, like I said, you wrote the book. But uh, I think it's really important because uh, I, think it's, I think it's good for the Lord to hear your heart and also for you to be censored um, the, on the day that you wake up, you know, um, by also having the chance to hear from the Lord before you do anything else. Um, there have been times where I've realized that it was one, two, maybe three o'clock in the afternoon, and I feel so anxious. Or mm-hmm. it's been times where you, I've texted you about being frustrated, and you was like, did you, did you, did you, really spend time with the Lord this mm-hmm. morning. And maybe I have like, sometimes I have like a habit of just throwing like a quick prayer up, mm-hmm. you know, but not really spending time with him, mm-hmm. giving him my day. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think even when we think about the fact that God gave us this day, mm-hmm. like he literally gave you this day. Yeah. Like every breath is a breath from him. Yeah, today it's, is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and, and be, be glad, glad in it. it. And so for you to even acknowledge him first yeah. with this day, yeah. <laughs> you know, I think lets us know that it governs uh, how we will experience this day. Yeah. How we will experience his creation, how yeah. we will experience our family, how we will experience him. Yeah. And so I think it's really important for, for us to to give him the, like like this is the day that she, like you literally made it. Yeah. And yeah. so I want to honor you for that. Yeah, I think I think we are very competent and resourceful people. Yeah. And therefore we live with a sense of sufficiency. Mm. And the that self-sufficientness is what keeps us from prayer, is what keeps us from intimacy, intimacy, which what keeps us from devotion, is that we think we have all the resources we need to accomplish the day well. And to some degree we do, right? We have cars, we have calendars, we have money, we have friends, we have food, we have all of that. But even the fact you got it is because God reigns on the just and the unjust. Mm. And so even to not say thank you, That's at the good. very least, God, thank you. That you, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it says something about your own heart. Um, but I also think we haven't even tapped into the degree to which we can bear more fruit if we laid aside our sufficiency to be filled with God's sufficiency. And what I mean is, like, we can accomplish a lot in the flesh. 
You really can't. And by flesh, I don't even mean in sin. Like mm. the, the the sin, like the humanity. You you could do so much in your humanity. Yeah. But th- but like when you look at the disciples and God told them, hey, uh, these people are hungry. Go feed them. He gave them the task to go feed them. And they all they really had, though, was five loaves and a couple fish. That was the sufficiency that they brought to the table, was we got some fish and we got some loaves, but we actually don't have enough to do everything that you called us to do. What does Jesus say? Jesus says, bring it to me. He br- They bring their sufficiency to God and he multiplies the bread. Mm-hmm. And I think that is what is being threatened when we don't get with God, is that our resources aren't even capable of giving us the multiplicity needed to do all that God has called us to do. I often thought, hey, that's, Period. that's really good. I often thought about that, about how gracious God is because we, we're, we're human beings, we're, we're, we're spiritual beings, right? Mm-hmm. And because of that, like even us being used, you said you, how you mentioned in the flesh, like he, he created us human beings. Anyway, so even what we do in the flesh is a testament to him. Yeah, all of it. All of it, yeah. right? But he he tells us to 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 depend on his spirit. Yeah. And so the fact that he still allows us to even make it, because if I made us, if I made people, and I'm like, okay, y'all don't want to, you know, operate in my spirit. Yeah. No, y'all I don't was, need to be here. That, that <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The but like, Lord God is used gracious. that text to like humble me a couple months ago, because I don't know if I said this on our podcast yet. Maybe I did. You can tell me if I did. But I was, I had to do this interview at TBN a couple, couple months ago. And I felt dry. Yeah. Did I, tell you, did I say this online yet? No, I don't think so. I felt like usually when I go into spaces where I have to do ministry, I know how it feels when the Lord is with me. Mm. It feels a certain way. There's like a freedom of speech. There's a clarity. There's a precision. There's a, like God is bringing ideas to my mind to articulate. Yeah. And I didn't have none of that. And yeah. I prayed. Yeah. God used me to do all the things. But I just felt so dry. And I was like, what is this? But I also felt a little joyless in it. And I, I said, God, I don't think I'm abiding. Mm. And I said, I don't think I'm abiding because what the scripture that came to my mind is when Jesus says, if you abide in me, you will bear, you much, will fruit, bear much, much fruit. fruit. Yeah. And so even my inability to be as fruitful as what I know I can be mm. was a signal that I haven't really been abiding with the Lord. Yeah. And I, I got, I had went in the closet and I got on my face and I felt the Lord speak to my heart and was like, you are not sufficient for these things. Yeah. Like what what I've called you to do, you cannot do if you do not abide in me. Yeah, because the scripture goes on to say, without me, without abiding in me, you could do nothing. You could do nothing. And it, and it doesn't mean you can't do nothing at all. It means you can do nothing good. Mm. Like you have no, you like th- there, there's nothing good that flows from us when we're not abiding in the one who is the source of all goodness. Mm. And so, you know, um, that's, that's good. Because I've also found myself like that, like, Lord, like, why do I feel dry? Mm. And Lord was like, have you, have you been with me? Yeah. <clears throat> you feel dry because you haven't spent time with me. Like, yeah. you know, uh, and so that's, that's, that's really I wanna, good. I want to talk about that though, because yeah. we want to spend time with the Lord so that we can be useful, so we could be fruitful. But we also want to spend time with the Lord just to spend time with the Lord. Yeah. So can you give us an example or just even speak to the delight that can come with intimacy? Yeah, because I think God wants to use us, but I don't think that he wants us to have a relationship with him just so we can be used. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right? I think that he wants a relationship with us because he loves us. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think that because when we think about being used by God, it's not that he wants to use us because he needs us. Right. Mm-hmm. God doesn't need us. He prefers to use us because of his goodness. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, he can be he's self-sufficient by himself. Mm-hmm. Right. But but I, I do think that ultimately the Lord wants us to be close to him, not to not to merely be used, but because being close to him is the best thing for us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If he's a because God is just not some God, he's a father. Mm-hmm. Right. That's good. Right. And so like I want the best for my children. I want the best for my children. Mm-hmm. And so God is saying, I want the best for y'all too. Yeah. That's why you should be with me. Yeah. 
I'm literally the best for you. Yeah. Like you, you lack joy because you haven't been with me. You lack uh, 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 peace because you haven't been with me. You, you're selfish because you haven't spent time with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you, you lack patience with your children because you, you, you haven't spent time and meditated on the fact that I've been patient with you. Like all of the things that you lack, right? And I don't want you to lack these things. Mm-hmm. It's because you haven't been with me. And so I think God wants us to, to spend that time with him because he knows he's literally the best thing for us. That's good because it's in the secret place. It's in the intimacy. It's in the devotion. It's in the time with God that he fills you with himself. Mm-hmm. And by filling you with himself, that spills over into everything that you do. Yeah. Right? Because when when you have any kind of deficiency, so for example... When you don't feel, I'm going to use one that I struggle with the most. When you don't feel secure, you kind of move with an insecurity where the things that you do become the things that give you security. So it could be the preaching that makes me feel secure. Right? Yeah. It could be the praise that makes me feel secure. It could be being mean is a source of security for some people because yeah. it's like a defense. I, yeah, I don't want you to think I'm weak. So let me let me deflect, let me like stiff arm you cuz that makes me feel secure. Yeah. Or but, it makes me look strong. Yeah, which is a source of yeah, I don't know. So like when you when you meet with the Lord and say God, I feel insecure. Mhm. I don't feel safe. I don't I don't feel cared for. I don't I don't like when you tell him that then you give him the opportunity to be that for you, mm. f- for him to be your refuge. That's good. For him to be your strong tower, That's for good. him to be your security, for him to be a rock. Yeah. And so that when you, you leave the next day, now when you preach, you don't preach for security. Mm. You preach to serve. Yeah. Now when you're in your relationships, you you don't have to stiff arm people because you're, you're secure. And yeah. so I think, I am guess I'm saying there's a sense in which the delight that God is able to give us in time with him then kind of clarifies everything that we do for him. That's good. Because there have been times when me and you have both been honest and was just like, I just kind of felt God hand on me at, at this particular event mm-hmm. because it's just been evident that I've been with him. And many times it was like, okay, I'm off. Yeah. I'm off. And yeah. it's because I haven't really spent adequate time with How do Lord. you discern that? Because I, I guess I'm hearing people say, how do I know if I'm off? Is that not a subjective experience? Like, no, I, I don't. I, yeah. Is there a difference between that and shame? Well, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think, because one, I think even, even God can also use our offness, right? Okay. And so I don't think that we should ever be shamed at all, you know. But I do think, you know, the, the, the beautiful thing about the Christian faith, it is something that is... Um, you know, objectively true that we can that we can research, but it's also an experience. And so having a relationship with this personal being, like you, you, you experience certain ways in which he's using you in the moment. It is not just some religion where we're just practicing things. So it's like, it's like when I'm on a stage and I'm doing this QA, I know because I know myself, I know, I know answers shouldn't be coming to my head automatically that way. Mm. And I have this relationship with this transcendent, you know, infinite God, and I know he's empowering me in this moment. Mm-hmm. And I know it's a testament to my prayer life. Mm. And I and, and, and I can tell the difference because one, he has naturally gifted me to be a communicator, right. right? And so I can wing it and people can be blessed. Yeah. But, but and sometimes you being used by the Lord, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It is, um, it's, I don't think it's always things that people can notice. That's good. But you notice it. That's good. And I think, and I and I and and also too, I think people can be blessed, but I think when you are used by the Lord, that's when the Lord can allow you to kind of shift some things in the room. Uh-huh. And I've seen, I've seen God use you in that way. Yeah. You know, I had an experience like that in Toronto, you know what I'm saying, where I was just really dependent on the Lord and He and He used me that night. And so, like, you know, I, I just kind of feel like you shouldn't condemn yourself, you know, but I think that it should be a consistent reminder of the Lord just gently saying, okay, I use you, but you could have been tapped in a little more. Mm-hmm. Like you could have been sensitive to what I wanted you, wanted you to say a little mm-hmm. more. And don't get it twisted and think that because he used you on Thursday, that 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 doesn't mean you could skip being with him on Friday. Yeah. You know, because we, we get, we're, we're very easily satisfied. So yeah. it's like, shoot. The Lord was with me last night. Let yeah. me just, you know, but it's like, no, you need him to like give us this day our daily bread. Daily, daily, daily. 
I always need him. Yeah. Every single day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even, even, even ministry aside, uh, the Lord had convicted me before at a glory where at my glory events, I really, you would think I'm the most savedest person alive. I am just praying and seeking the Lord and not watching too much TV, meditating. I'm, I'm over here getting on my knees in the bed, just doing a lot to be useful. And I remember the Lord was like, okay, that's awesome. I want you to do this at home too, as it relates to your family. Mm. I want you to be this thirsty to seek me as it relates to loving your husband. Yeah. I want you to be this adamant in seeking me as it relates to your children. Mm -hmm. And it's like sometimes, sometimes we will, we will pursue intimacy with God so fervently for ministry but we don't do that when it comes to loving our neighbor. Yeah. When it comes to loving our enemy. Yeah. When it comes to being nice to our spouse. And that's the part that's been tripping me yeah, up. But I also think it can reveal a lot of things. I don't I, I don't want to speak for you, but oh, you I got to preach. No. I'm not gonna preach. I'm just saying I think it can reveal a lot of things because I'm not I don't wanna speak for you, but I know for me, I've I've tr I've leaned in, you know, leaned in more or sought the Lord more or cried out for his help more. And because he's faithful, he's helped me. But I didn't like, I think God had to show me and I, cause I, I experienced what you experienced for glory at times when I was writing my book, mm. I was like, Lord, I, 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 I can remember begging him from help. Like, Lord, help me finish this chapter. I feel slow. <laughs> I feel slow. I can't think of one word. Help me, God, please. And I, I, at times I felt like, <laughs> at times I felt like how Eden begs me for stuff. Mm -hmm. Like how she just be like, like, why are you begging me this much for a snicker? It's not your life. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how I felt. Mm -hmm. Like, God, please help me. <laughs> I, okay, okay, Lord, I am slow. <laughs> I'm slow. Just humble. <laughs> and the Lord, <laughs> okay, you, you're trying to reveal that I'm slow. I need your help. Be smart in me, right? Be smart in me. <laughs> okay. And and I feel like the Lord was like, because I've I've allowed you to operate in these gifts that I gave you, you don't beg me for everything with it. You don't beg, you should beg me for everything just like that. Right? And so like I think God and his, he's so gracious that he will allow us to operate with not truly trusting him and not truly leaning on him like we should at times. But then he'll allow things like glory when you have all of these women depending on you to speak, right? He'll depend on me having to write my first book and mm -hmm. say, you know what? You're not tight. Yeah. You, you consistently need me. And you're, you're, you're reinforcing by original point which was that we have a sufficiency problem. Mm. To be more prayerful, to spend more time in your word, to, to do all of that, it's not about time. It's not about scheduling. It's not about busyness. It's not about productivity. It's about dependence. Mm -hmm. Are you dependent on God for everything? Yeah. If you were or are, it will show up in your spiritual disciplines. Yeah. Period. Because we, because, because, and it's, it's, because we have to look at God like a father. Because sometimes we mm. can give our kids too much and they can start feeling themselves. And sometimes you got to like take something away to say like, man, no, this is still daddy and mommy doing X, mm. Y, Z. Yeah. And so God has given us the intelligence that we have. Mm. But then some people lean too much on it. Yeah. God has given and us. And he'll take your mind. Yeah, and God has given us the ability to plan. Yeah. But sometimes we can depend too much on it. Come on. God has given us the ability to write. Yeah. But sometimes we can depend too much on it. Uh-huh. Right? And God is saying, I get, I gave you these things, mm -hmm. but you still should trust in me to mm -hmm. operate in these things. You know, I felt like that when I was pregnant. I felt so, I felt like a dunce. Like not even stupid, like yeah. a dunce. I be feeling. I, I always feel sorry for you because it's it's the trying to get out the bed. Will you be doing this? No, forget that. I couldn't think. I couldn't create sentences. Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't feel smart, and I remember sitting in my car. I said, "Lord, please, 
restore back to me all of my intelligence when this is all said and done. Yeah. Because, but I say, I, it it just, I think those moments reinforce that I even need you for my brain. Mm-hmm. For my brain to function accordingly, I need you. Mm-hmm. I need you for everything. Yeah. Um, which is frustrating. So back to the the boring question. I think... I think our society is constructed in such a way where we don't know how to be bored no more. And because we don't know how to be bored no more, it's affecting our prayer life. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because when you got Eden and Autumn, for example, if they're watching anything, they can skip commercials. If they're watching the show that they don't like, they could exit out of the show and find 17,000 other cartoons to replace that one. Mm. If we are in a waiting area in the doctor's office, guess what we could do? We could pull up our phone and scroll. Like we are so entertained, like we're entertained to death. And so when the Lord is like, yeah, read through the whole book of Amos. Huh? Yeah. That's boring. Yeah. Right? Like it's not as, it's not as entertaining. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's a really good point. I think one of the, one of the reasons why I feel like it was dope that you wrote this book it's because the fact that you are challenging the body of Christ to seek the Lord upon waking, because I think it's dope. It's because God is not a God who, he fights for our attention, but he don't fight for our attention. What you mean? I mean, so so he will allow things to happen to, for us to, 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 to um, for us to know that like, We've kind of strayed away, but like when we get in the in the in the crux of our day and we and we and we're so busy with stuff, God often speaks to us in the quiet. Like He waits for us mm-hmm. to be alone and to and to be silent. And He He He, he He's not He's not going to compete with so much because mm-hmm. He doesn't have to. He should have to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And so for you to challenge us to like seek the Lord before all of that even hits you. Yeah. So I think that's the important thing. That's true. Because once we get out and start enjoying our day, it's so much to distract us. Yeah. But when we first wake up, that's a lot for a lot of us, that's when we have the least distractions. That's true. Right? That's practical. So like if, if you could just practice not picking up your phone first. Uh, you you know, before you get in the car, before you 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 think about listening to podcasts, before the kids wake up, before all the if you do it first, I feel like you and your relationship with the Lord can be just, it can become closer yeah. because he's not competing with nothing. What did your time, I feel like we we probably talked about this before, but what did your time look like when you were single? Oh my gosh. And I had, I had too much time. <laughs> and versus how your time with the Lord looks like now. I would love, to, I would love to hear your answer too. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, it looked great. I mean, I was known in the in, in in Chicago as the poet evangelist. And so at night you can catch me at open mics or and then I start traveling, United States doing poetry. But at home, I mean me and my homies, we stayed on trains, west side, south side, north side, evangelizing. Everywhere. Everywhere. Mm-hmm. So we was just, you know a little compass. Yeah, we were just a, we were just evangelists. Mm-hmm. And so that's what my time looked like. Um, and so I woke up in the morning, I did my my devotion. Would you read the Bible? Did you do a devotional? Did you No, I, my, my devotion was reading the Bible and I had um my cousin who and, and my friend and my friend Angel. And so what we would do is we would read the Bible and then when we get up around twelve, when we get out come our room like eleven o'clock when we didn't have work or whatever, we would all discuss what we what we what we okay. read. So accountability. Account of, yeah, we, we yeah, that's that's kind of what we did and, and that's what my day looked like. And so my day was just so free. Uh, with doing what I wanted to do. But I also had the flexibility if I didn't pray at night, you know, in the morning, whatever, I can pray at night before mm-hmm. I go to bed. Mm-hmm. But like when you have kids and when you have a ministry and a wife and you're traveling, mm-hmm. it just becomes more difficult. And maybe we should speak to that. Like, because I also think that God is not some um, mechanical God where he wants us to, be like other faiths where they they have to pray five times a day or whatever, yada, yada, yada. But he is a relational God. Yeah. And because he's a relational God, he understands how our lives have changed. Yeah. Right? And so God understands. I don't really think it's about necessarily always giving God your his your, like time at that particular time, but like being intentional yeah. with what you what you have. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think as a as a single person. 
I, I, I think it was the same tension. It's like I had a lot more time to get in the word, but I also had a lot more time to do everything else, mm-hmm. right? And so it's like, oh, y'all want to go here? Let's go. Like, oh, let's go to the mall. Like, I had so much freedom that that also was a distraction, Yeah, you know? Um, and so I, I do think that the season isn't necessarily the issue. I think it's always the heart. Mm. It, the, the, That's good. It's the heart that then governs how you leverage the season. And so for me, I think when I got married, it was an adjustment. One, it was an adjustment to wake up with a whole human being next to you, right? That's a distraction. Mm -hmm. A a good one. Yeah. Praise God for you. But like some- The shade. No, it's not. It's like- (laughs) I'm just playing. We start talking or we start engaging with one another or we, you know, you want to go to breakfast. Like this having a person next to you immediately takes your attention off of, I think, just some stuff. Some stuff. Then when we start having babies, it was like, Lord, I'm too tired. Yeah, I'm tired. And so I felt like uh, I was getting wisdom from older mothers who were like, just try to add some type of spiritual discipline into your normal rhythms. And so when I would get up in the middle of the night to feed Sage, August, Eden, whoever, I would listen to the Bible or listen to worship music about the Bible. And it, that was that's all I could give him. At that time yeah. that, That's all I had Because I was just exhausted And I felt like There was grace for it That's good I felt like I was in a season Where the Lord was like It's like the uh, You know the uh, When Jesus saw that lady Where she had gave Like a little penny Or something like that And he was like She gave from her lack Not yeah. of her abundance yeah. It felt like that Like I'm giving you The most I have From my lack Yeah. Um, but then There was a shift when August start, started sleeping through the night, I really sensed that the Lord was like, okay. You got more time. You got more grace now. You, right. You can wake up early. Yeah. Like, everybody's sleeping. Yeah, it kind of reminds me, <laughs> it, it kind of reminds me of the Jonathan Marina song, like, where he says, I'll make room for what I like, mm-hmm. you know, um, and... I make time for what I treasure. Sure. I make time for what I want. Priority. Jesus, you're my number. Yeah, yeah. You, we jacking up. Sorry, Jonathan, for jacking up your song. Because if we post this, he'll, he will be mad. You know, he uh, he hates people messing up his lyrics. And? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, I, I feel like God is saying, like, you, you make time for what you like, mm. you know? Um, and for me, like, I feel like like early on in my, in my walk, um... I didn't have a lot of distractions, you know, I didn't have a lot of things competing for my time. But at the same time, like when, when my life became busier, it became an excuse, but it wasn't an excuse because God is saying, no, you can pray, you can pray with me. You can talk with me. And there's moments where you can talk with me. You just don't choose to. Yeah. You literally don't choose to. Yeah. You know, um, I I was going to say something else. I forgot. I've I've been trying to, um, be more deliberate about that. And so it's going to sound weird, but I, I've been like, okay, what are spaces in my day where I can listen to scripture? Mm-hmm. And it might not be as entertaining, but I think it'd be good for my soul. And so when I work out now, uh, when I stop listening to profane secular music, I'm making a distinction. Um, when I stopped listening to that, that was my workout music. And I was like, I'm going to listen to the Bible. Mm. And it's not, it don't pump up, you know, your heart rate too much. It doesn't feel exciting. It doesn't give me the energy. But for me, it feels like this is a time that I could make use of like learning and listening to God talk to me, you know, Um, and try to meditate. Like, because even uh, the scripture says like, meditate, on his, no, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the seat of scoffer, nor uh, sits, da, 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 but meditates on his law day and night. and night. So that means throughout the day, how am I looking for moments to meditate? Yeah. On his word, day and night. Yeah. And if that's on the treadmill, then that's on the treadmill. And, and I want to say this too. That's good. I want to say this because I think this may be helpful to, to some people because I know it has helped me tremendously in my walk. 
with the Lord, because I think when we, when we, when we talk about all of these things that um, fight for our attention, what I said earlier is they also fight for our affection. That's good. Because what, what takes our attention will eventually take our affection, right? We, we become affectionate with things we spend time with. That's just... That's just... That's a word. Yeah, we become affectionate for the things that we spend time with. And I think a lot of times the temptation can be, I don't, I don't know how to tell the Lord, I don't want you. I don't, I don't know how to tell the Lord, I'd, I'd, I'd rather get on TikTok before I spend time with you, Lord. i rather, I don't want to read my word like I wanted to read my word when I first got saved. I think... I think a lot of times people can't fathom being honest with the Lord about how you don't want him. And I I, I think we have to understand one of my favorite passages in scripture, Hebrews 4.14, that God is not just some God who stayed up in heaven, but he's a God who condescended and became like us. Mm -hmm. The Bible, that, that scripture also said he was without sin, so he didn't become sinful like us, but he did become human like us. And it says that he can empathize with our weakness because of it. And so we have to understand that God knows, first of all, he knows that you, you her affections is gone in some ways because mm-hmm. he's God. Mm-hmm. And so, and secondly, we serve a God who experientially came like us. Mm-hmm. And so because of that, like God is never going to be a, so offended by you saying, God, I don't want you, help me, mm. that he does not help you. That's good. And so the way we, the way we become more like God and get more and become and, and, and get closer to God in this walk is being honest with him in those in those seasons where we don't want him and saying, like, like the like the way you become more like God in those seasons that you don't want him is by saying, God, I don't want you like I used to. Help me. He's the only one that can help you want him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so for me, I just had those moments in my in my walk where I was just like, God, I don't want you like I used to. And what happened? He helped me. How? Um, he helped me by giving, like, like giving me more of an, an, an affection. There's been times in my walk where I was like, Lord, give me more of a passion to read your word. I don't want to just trust in the things that I know. I know a whole lot of Bible. Mm-hmm. But but like I, I I don't feel close to you because I'm not in my word like I used to. Mm. Like give like give me like if God can give you an affection to forgive your neighbor or your brother or your dad or somebody that offended you, why can't He give you more of an affection to to love Him more? Mm. Mm. If you ask Him for it, mm. right? Um, and so like it's been times where I I I I've waking up and I'm like, why do I feel the need to read Second Peter? Mm. <laughs> And it's like, oh, I pray, I pray for God to give me that desire last week. I, I think you just said a lot. I, I think what's helpful is to, to know that the Lord can, it's, it's kind of when David said, like, give me a, a new heart and renew a, a right spirit within me. Give me the, give me the joy of your salvation. Mm-hmm. Like, give me, give me, give me. Yeah. And he does it. But we also have to respond. Yeah. Right. And so when the Lord placed it on your heart for you to read Peter or whatever, if you rejected that prompting, then you therefore continue to harden your heart to getting a new affection. Yeah. And so the fact that you responded to it is what God then uses to to move you towards worship. You get what I'm saying? Can I can I give you one example? Yes. Just, just to give the people a tangible tangible example. Um I've been I've been asking the Lord to give me more of a passion, not to just study the things that I like to study mm-hmm. about apologetics and stuff. Because I think, uh, it, to be honest, I've struggled with that. Like I can be passionate about one particular thing and I can study it for a year. I know. Yeah, you know. Um, but I was like, Lord, give me a passion to study Your Word more, mm. um, and uh, and to and to. To, to discover new things about you mm-hmm. that I can give to your people and yada, yada, yada. Uh, so I can feel closer to you, right? And so we were coming back from Germany. And one of the things that I love to do on planes is to watch TV. Mm-hmm. Especially if we got a good seat, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I didn't turn on t- that TV not one time. I saw. Yeah, coming back or whatever. And I got out my Bible. And the only thing that I felt compelled to do was to read God's word and to just learn learn about him. And that was because for the last couple of weeks, I've been asking the Lord to give me more of a passion to read his word. Mm. 
and he's and he's done it. Mm. He's answered that prayer. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to see, like, I think God gives us that 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 grace to see I'm more valuable than watching TV. Yeah. Like he, like he, at that moment, he, like, I didn't even have a desire, which before it would, it would have been like, man, like the last hour, I probably would have tried to get my phone out. Yeah. But I actually pulled out the, like the little leather joint. I'm a book real Bible. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so I think God, he, he just honest prayers like that. Mm. That's good. I want to read 2 Corinthians 3, verse 16. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. I read this because, like, looking at the Lord is what makes you like the Lord. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, there's, it, it's so practical, fellowship with God is. It's, if you want to love me more, look at me. If you want to worship me more, look at me. If you want to know me more, look at me. Mm -hmm. If you want to be holier, look at me. Like, yeah. look at me. And so, what are you looking at most yeah. will typically determine who you look like. That's good. And I think that's a very practical way for us to kind of frame the whole conversation of seeking God in the morning is that it, who, I, who I watch the most is typically who I will look like. Mm -hmm. And um, I think when you look at Jesus's life, if I look at Jesus a lot, I'm going to pray like Jesus prayed. Mm -hmm. That's just the reality. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. The Jesus discipling us. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. Spirit the Spirit leading us into all truth. Yeah. Um, which That's is good. leading us into Christ That's and good. towards Christ. And so I, I want to say, uh, I don't know if we ever talked about this, but I feel like we should. I feel like there is so so much spiritual warfare when it comes to people reading the Bible. I think praying, listening to worship, even reading my book feels safer. Hmm. Because I think people feel like they don't they don't read not just because they don't want the Lord, but because they don't understand. Mm -hmm. And so I, I kind of want to talk to that insecurity uh, of feeling like I don't get it. I'm reading it, but I don't get it. Like, yeah. I don't, why am I? So that's a part of the boredom is that I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> like, can we, can we process through that? I think, I think a, a, a lot of it is um, a lack of, a, a lack of um, education mm -hmm. for, for some, um, just on a very practical um, uh, advice. I think um, people who really want to learn the Bible, I think, you can ask your pastors your, or your local community um, what is a hermeneutics class <laughs> and to, to, to have like a class to just to know how to study the Bible, uh -huh. to know how to look for Jesus in the Old Testament, to know um, how to read cross references, to know, um, to, to, um, to learn how to ask yourself good questions in reading the word. And so if if I'm reading, if what I'm reading is a letter, who wrote this letter? Why is he writing this letter? Who is he writing the letter to? All of these things, all of these, these, these trainings can give you more context and have you less confused when you read it, when you read the Bible. Um, but also too, I, I think, so with that, that's one. Two, I, I think we have to realize that it's also spiritual. It's a it's mm -hmm. a spiritual component to it. It's not merely because the the Bible is a spiritual book. Mm -hmm. It is not just you know um, um, the the scripture says that that God's word is God breathed, which means literally breathed by the breath of God. John one says, "In the beginning was the word, and the words with God, and the word was God." Right. And so because it's a, it's a spiritual book, we have to understand that in Corinthians it says that a natural man does not understand spiritual things, for they are spiritually discerned. That's good. Right. And so if they are spiritually discerned, there is, uh, 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 I think, for a person, I think there's a begging that we should do, hmm. not just axing. God, because because your your word is spirit, like help me understand this, mm -hmm. and and because God made our brains, mm -hmm. right, and because this word is literally Him, mm -hmm. He can make the two meet, yeah, right, um, if we ask Him for it. And so I think I think from a practical standpoint, we need to learn how to practically study the Bible, but also 
how to how to practically learn how to um, trust in the spirit. I'm gonna read something. That was excellent, by the way. Oh, thank you, baby. That was really good. I like when my, when my wife affirmed me. It makes me feel real good. I'm glad you're affirmable. <laughs> I knew it was good. Huh? <laughs> no. I'm the head. If you weren't affirmable, that'd be rough. All right, so after Jesus resurrects from the grave, uh, he meets a few of the disciples and he starts to, you know, say, hey, like, look at my hands, look at my feet, touch them, you see, you see the wounds and stuff like that. And then uh, verse 20, 42, he asks for some fish, which is funny because it's like, why are you hungry? <laughs> but maybe he wasn't, I don't know. They gave him a piece of broiled fish. He took it and ate before them. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and mm. the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Here it is, verse 44, 45. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures mm. and said to them, thus it is written That's that the good. Christ should suffer and on the day, third day rise from the dead. So it's, it's he good. talks about the law. He talks about Moses. He talks about the prophets, but it's by his power that they get it. Oof. And so I'm just affirming what you're saying is that we are even dependent on God to understand God's word. And so some of it is, yes, we need to be taught. Yes, we need to be instructed. Yes, we need to listen to uh, leaders and teachers who are teaching accurately, but also be dependent on the Holy Spirit to help you understand the word that he inspired. That's good. And he will. That's real and, and good. And he has. So. In closing, upon what, do you, waking. what do you want people to walk away with upon reading Upon Awakening? Upon Awakening. Um, upon Waking. I just want it to be a means by which you get in the rhythm of having a disciplined time with God. Um, I want it to be a resource. I don't want this to be bread. I want this to be an appetizer. The mm. bread is the scripture. Like it's the scripture that is God breathed. It's the scripture that is profitable. It's the scripture that is useful. And it's not just the scripture. It's who the scripture communicates about, which is God himself, That's right? Good. And so I just kind of want this to take away some of the awkwardness and the instability of our time with God and just kind of be a like a... I don't know, a yeah, tool. That's good. Cause like this is a new book for some. And what if you go to a new restaurant, right? Uh, when you go to a new restaurant, the appetizer, if the appetizer is great, it just makes you more excited for the entree. Yeah. And so I think that's that's what this book, its book is great. Yeah. But I think what it should ultimately do is to make you say, man, if this book is good, um, the Bible is better. Yeah. And so, so I would I would say before you read it, pray. Ask the Lord to communicate with you, to speak to you, to soften your heart so you can hear from him. Yes. Um, and then read the day, but also read the scripture that the day is communicating about. Um, and so read the chapter or read the book if you got time and then do that every day. And don't, I just, I just, I really, it would be hard for me to believe that if you seek God with your whole heart that you won't find him. That's good. That's I think good. you will. Well, your, your your resources have been a body, a blessing to the body of Christ. What about you? I'm not talking about me right now. I'm talking about you. We're You're grateful. Not in the body. We're, we're, we're grateful okay. for Bye. all your resources. Bye. Peace. With the Perrys is produced by the Perrys with support from Amanda Reed and Channing B. McBride. Editing by Xavier Fairley. Video recording and audio production by Kim Powell. Artwork by Hop and music by Swoop. If you'd like to support the Perrys, you can visit the link in the show notes. This is with the Perrys. Thank you for listening. Now go with God. <laughs>